kids, during the month of August, your Sabbath school is a little different compared to the four and a half months of Zoom classes that we've been having. However, we'll still cater for all of you, for the beginners, kindergarten, primary, and PowerPoint. This time, it's going to start with a song, and even the little ones, parents can hold the child's um, hands and do the action, and followed by your lesson, and then there'll be a drama production coming from Pathfinder International Camp in Oshkosh, and this production is from 2014. More than 50,000 Pathfinders attended this camp. Enjoy it, it's a five-part series. Thank you, and see you around. Let's go. everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called, Now I See. The memory verse is from Acts chapter 9, verse 15. It says, This man is my chosen instrument. Today's message is God's love changes people. Imagine not being able to see anything Everything is dark. You know it is day or night only by what other people tell you. For three days, Saul could not see anything. Saul sat quietly in Judas's house. He did not look at all fearsome or masterful. He was not the take-charge person he had been only three days ago. He sat quietly, his head bowed. He spent all of his time praying. There was so much to pray for. Saul had certainly prayed for forgiveness. He was horrified when he thought of the Christians he had persecuted. And he also thanked and praised the Lord again and again for his salvation. The memory of having Jesus call to him on the road to Damascus still thrilled him. He lived the moment over and over in his mind. Judas and his family offered Saul food to eat, but he would not take it. In fact, he would not even take anything to drink. Finally, they just left him alone with his thoughts. The news spread quickly through Damascus. Saul had arrived. Saul, the mighty hunter of Christians. The believers had heard he was coming, but now he was here. But it was said he was sitting in Judas's house. Rumor had it that he had somehow been struck blind. People learned that he had been led into the city like a child. Something strange had certainly occurred, but no one was quite sure what. Three days had gone by since Saul's encounter with the Lord. Then Ananias, a follower of Jesus, had a vision. The Lord appeared to him and said, Get up and go to Straight Street. Find the house of Judas. 
ask for a man named Saul who is from the city of Tarshish. He is there now, praying. Saul is blind. He has seen you in a vision. You will go to him, pray, and lay your hands on him. Then he will see again. Ananias was understandably nervous. Lord, he answered, many people have told me about this man. He has done terrible things to your people in Jerusalem, and now he has come here to Damascus. The leading priests have given him power to arrest anyone who worships you. The Lord reassured Ananias, Do not worry. Go. I have chosen Saul for an important work, he said. He must tell people about me. He will tell kings, Jews, and people of foreign lands about my love for everyone. Ananias obeyed the Lord. As he walked to Judas's house on Straight Street, he may have looked around. Everything looked quite normal. Ananias shook his head. Everything was really far from normal. He had just had a vision from the Lord, and he was on his way to meet the dreaded Saul, whom the Lord said was now a believer. Ananias found Judas's house. He found Saul sitting quietly and without sight, waiting for him. Ananias was filled with compassion. He laid his hands on Saul. Brother Saul, he said, the Lord Jesus sent me. He sent me so you can see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. He could see again and Saul asked to be baptized at once. He did not even take time to eat or drink. Yes, God had called Saul, and he had called Ananias too. They served the Lord for the rest of their lives. Today, God has called you to be his witness. Will you choose to listen? Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy Fullwood. Your Majesty, it's complete. Then it's time. Send out the invitations. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me please. Your king has issued a new decree. Letters have been sent to some worthy names, inviting them to the Durin Plains. Out there, a golden image does stand, a mighty symbol of a mighty land. Come join the grandeur and pageantry, magnificent splendor and luxury. You'll be amazed, aghast, and bedazzled. Control yourself. You're dizzy and frazzled. If the king calls you to bask in his glory, then save the date, because... Attendance is mandatory. <laughs> when I was a boy, I, I heard stories of Nebuchadnezzar's golden statue. I always assumed it was a myth. 
He actually built it? Eighty-seven and a half feet tall, covered in gold. It was astounding. Wow. And, and how did you build it so quickly? Let's just say I was motivated. It wouldn't be long before Daniel got word of the statue, and I needed his friends to bow to it first. Oh, yes, the sinister plan. Not sinister. I simply wanted Daniel to give up his ridiculous religious beliefs. It was manipulative, I'll give you that, but not evil. So what was Daniel doing the whole time you were erecting a golden statue? <laughs> He was in your homeland of Medea, trying hard to keep up with an insane Medean king. Okay, here's a joke for you. Two Arartians walk into a Lucanta. The Sunuku says, how can I serve the two of you? And the two Arartians run away like frightened children. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a funny joke? <laughs> I, I... I can't say that it's not. I am so glad you came to visit. You are more fun than that good-for-nothing Nebuchadnezzar. Tell me, is he still appallingly ugly? Uh, um, well... You don't have to answer. I already know he is. You know I gave him my daughter's hand in marriage. Worst mistake I ever made. He still owes me 400 camels for that deal. Don't you think I'll be forgetting that anytime soon? Do you... Ever see my daughter, Amethyst? Yes, occasionally. She seems quite happy. Huh. No thanks to her husband, I am sure. Actually, Nebu Chad Nezer loves her deeply. Why else would he build the hanging gardens for her? Because he knows. If she is unhappy, I will burn Babylon to the ground, and the black smoke will billow to the heavens for the world to see. Oh, okay. So. So, can I gather up some plants and animals, or...? I do not own the plants and animals. Take what you like. Uh, no more business. Make me laugh. What? Entertain me, or I'll mount your head on a stick! Uh, the, um... <laughs> I'm only kidding with you. <laughs> so much fun! You will stay here as my guest for another week. Oh, thank you. How lovely. H however, I... I insist! Of, of course, I'll, I'll stay as your guest, with little or no regard for my personal safety. <laughs> what can I say? His misery was my pleasure. <laughs> you dislike Daniel that much? It's not that I didn't like him. You couldn't help but like Daniel. I, I enjoyed matching wits with all of them. Which is why I had so much fun with their invitation. You mean their invitation to the statue ceremony? Of course! In my mind, they were the guests of honor. So I arranged for something whimsical for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is exciting, the king is inviting you three to come on down to the best show around. Then you'll be asked to bow. If you refuse to better get used to being a bit on fire, obey or you are sure to expire. Nobody appreciates an artist. Here. What was that? I don't know. She was pretty good, though. Is... Is this saying what I think it's saying? He... He's gonna make everybody bow. I knew it! The second I saw that thing being built, I knew nothing good could come now, from it. Now stay calm. Let's just figure this figure out. Figure what out? King Cuckoo Bananas is gonna kill us if we don't bow down to his giant idol. Not just kill us. Burn us alive. We need Daniel. He's hundreds of miles away. So what are we gonna do? Well, we are not bowing, that's now, for sure. Now, hold on. Let's not be too hasty. Seriously? I'm not bowing to it. Now, hear me out. Remember our worship? When Daniel read the writings of Jeremiah to us. Okay, yeah, but that was different. Was it? 
Daniel was very clear about his point. Here's what Jeremiah said. Thus says the God of Israel, I have made the earth, the men, and the beasts by my great power, and I give it to whomever is suitable to me. And now I have given all these lands to Nebuchadnezzar, my servant, and all nations shall serve him. Now, here's the interesting part. Any nation that will not serve Nebuchadnezzar will I punish with the sword, with famine and pestilence, until I have consumed it. God spoke through Jeremiah commanding us to obey Nebuchadnezzar and serve Babylon. It's very clear. No, Azariah, I see your point. But accepting the rule of Babylon and worshipping a giant idol are two very different things. I agree. We're asked to obey the laws of the land, but not if they conflict with God's law. And besides, you're forgetting the rest of Daniel's lesson that day. Did you catch the part where God called Nebuchadnezzar his servant? That blew me away! I just kept asking myself, how could he be God's servant? He doesn't even know God. And then I realized, that's our purpose, to introduce this king to the ruler of heaven. Every chance we get, we need to represent God. So what are we saying here? Are we saying this ceremony, this statue, is a chance for us to witness for God? If not now, when? No matter how you cut it, bowing to that statue means worshipping another god. I won't do that. Me either. You know, if we don't bow, we'll die. Well, if I have to die, I'll die doing God's will. May this be a witness to all who see it. When the music plays, we stand. We stand. We stand. We bring ourselves to you. We submit ourselves to you. We honor your faithfulness with our lives. Our hope it comes from you. We believe you'll see us through. We honor your faithfulness with our lives. Lord, let your light shine down on us and all throughout the land. Let our face show from every corner of the realm came to pay homage to Babylon. It was inspiring, but I couldn't forget the real reason I was there. 
This was the moment I would see them bow. I was breathless with anticipation. Wow. It looks just like me. Except bigger. And yellower. Ariok, is everything in place? Can we begin? Good questions, my king. If I was to be honest, I would say I'm stalling, because there's a bit of a problem with the band. What? Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but alas, the sackbutt player hasn't shown up yet. The what? You know, the sackbutt. What's a sackbutt? Oh, my king. It's a wonderful instrument. Without it, we're just not going to sound right. We are not holding up this ceremony for a sackbutt! Now just get that band ready to go! Okay, you're the boss. But there's some valuable harmonies that won't- Just do it! Like a guy king of the world, I think. Iltani, is everything set? Iltani! Yeah, yes my king! Are we ready? Absolutely, yes. Good. The furnace is already lit, so let's do this! Princes! Governors! Captains! Judges! Treasurers! Counselors! And all the rulers of the provinces! Welcome to the plains of Dura! Your mighty king, Nebuchadnezzar, knows how much you love this great empire. And he has gathered you here today, so you can prove it! You are commanded, O oh peoples, nations, and languages, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, trigon, harp, dulcimer... Except that we don't have a sack butt, so just try to bear with us on that. Are you crazy? Don't interrupt. I'm just saying, if you came to hear a sack butt, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. <clears throat> As I was saying, um, when you hear the, the music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image your king has built for you. And whosoever does not worship shall that very hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace! I wouldn't disappoint him if I were you. So without further ado, let the band play! All right, let's keep it clean. F sharp major on me. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. This was it! The moment I had longed for! But... wait! What's this? A tiny island in the midst of a vast sea of prostrate bodies! There they stood! Not once in my wildest imagination did I ever consider they wouldn't bow! Insanity! Okay... Well, this is awkward. Why? What's going on? Uh, I'm afraid there's a few men still standing. What? Stop! Stop! Stop the music! Stop it! What do you mean, still standing? How dare they? Your Majesty, let me talk to them. Maybe they just don't understand. Then make them understand. Make them! They're probably protesting because there's no sack butt. Would you forget about the sack butt? Nobody cares about the sack butt! Have you guys lost your ever loving minds? Get down on the ground right now! It's not gonna happen, Iltani. We're not worshipping that idol. You idiots! You don't have to worship it! Just get down! Wipe the dust off your sandals for crying out loud! Just don't be stupid! No. We will worship God, and only God. You're insane! Do you see that furnace? He is gonna put you inside it! You'll burn alive! Think about that! Be smart! That will only happen if it's God's will. Ah, uh, forget them, Iltani! We've delayed long enough! Alright, you, you know, whatever. This is not what I wanted, but if you're going to be fools, then let's see how far you'll take it. What's going on? Why have they not bowed? My king, uh, there are certain Jews 
whom you have appointed over the affairs of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image. They refuse. What? Those are three of my best governors. They are not your men, my king. They serve another master, not you. We'll see about that. Bring them here. I know you're not refusing to worship my golden image, because that would mean certain death! So now that you're closer, and you can hear better, the band will play one more time. When you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, dulcimer, and if you say sack, but I will throw you right into that furnace myself! When you hear the music, you will fall down and worship the image I've made, or you will die! No god can deliver you out of my hands! Again! Okay, let's hit it. A one, a two. You a don't one, have two. to do this, my king. Your threats mean nothing to us. If you throw us into the fire, the god we serve is able to deliver us from the flames. But even if he doesn't, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image. Not now? Not ever. Ashpenaz! When I say never, you say Knezer. Never! Knezer! When I say never, you say Knezer. Never! Knezer! When I say never, you say Knezer. Never! Knezer! reputation that I must uphold. I have a giant statue made of solid gold. I have an ass, must just do as you're told. You made a mistake by being so bold. I'm just a little off, I don't deny. I threaten people off and tell them they will die. So you know I mean it and this is no lie. It's gonna get hot if you don't comply. If you do not stop. Never, 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 you're gonna You think your god can keep you cool? You think you're gonna make me a fool? You don't have to burn, all you have to do Is bow down when I tell you to A second chance you tell me not to bother My threat means nothing to your heavenly father In just a moment you'll be begging for water Find them, throw them in, make it happen If you do not bow You're gonna die Let this be a witness to you all! I don't believe what I... Just see a miracle. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. There were no burns, no wisps of smoke, no. Tell tale aromas, they weren't even warm. How impossible. 
Blessed be the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. His angel has delivered his servants who trusted in him. They offered up their lives rather than worship any god but their own. So I issue this decree. Anyone of any race, color, or creed who says anything against their god will be ripped to pieces limb from limb and their houses torn down. For there is no other god who can do such things. Were you not witnesses? Was that not the most amazing thing you've ever seen? You must tell me of this God you serve This miracle we just observed To his power We all will bow Life and death they're at his command he delivered you from my plans To his power We all will bow He is the greatest of all gods And when you needed him He was there I saw him there I thank you for showing me How to stand for what you believe Now I fall down to my knees In awe and humility And I sing holy I sing holy, holy is your God. The king promoted the three friends to high positions of power. To this day, visions of that event confound me. No. No, no, no. Do you take me as a fool? Do you expect me to believe that really happened? No! I expect you not to believe. No sane individual would believe such a story. I don't believe it, and yet I saw it happen. You're exaggerating. If that took place, every soul present would have been utterly convinced by the power of their god, including you. <laughs> really? Have you never been amazed by an illusionist who made someone disappear? Just because you don't know how they did it doesn't mean it wasn't a trick. <laughs> I was not going to be played a fool, no matter how remarkable. How about Nebuchadnezzar? Did he believe? He was an emotional man. For years he seemed conflicted, fighting some internal struggle. But it'd be over 40 years before Nebuchadnezzar became a true believer. If the fiery furnace didn't convince him, what on earth possibly could? <sighs> oh, I'll tell you, but you won't believe this either. It started, as usual, with a dream. Oh, Belteshazzar, thank you for coming back. I know the spirit of the Holy God is in you, and there's no secret mystery you can't solve. Please, tell me the meaning of my dream. I... Wish this dream were about those who hate you, and its interpretation for your enemies. The tree you saw that grew so large, visible from all corners of the world, that fed and sheltered all. That tree, my king, is you. You have grown great and strong. Your dominance stretches to the four corners of the world. You also saw an angel come down from heaven. That's right, I did. He proclaimed that the tree be cut down, leaving only the stump and roots, that he be soaked with heaven's dew and take his meals with the grazing animals for seven seasons. Stop, Belteshazzar. 
Please, tell me no more. The High God has sentenced you, no. my king. Please. You will be driven away from man and live with the wild animals. I'm begging you. I don't want to hear this. Seven years will pass, and you will learn that the mighty God rules the kingdom of mankind and gives it to whomever he will. Enough! Enough. I don't want to lose it all. Fear not. When you have learned this lesson, your kingdom will be returned to you. I'm so sorry. Say it isn't so. What does your God want from me? I'll do anything. Break free from your sins. Show mercy to the poor and oppressed. Do this and you'll be okay. Yes, I will. I'll start now. Will you help me? Of course. Of course I will. Daniel had interpreted dreams before. Why would this one change Nebuchadnezzar's spirit? It didn't. It wasn't long before the same old prideful Nebuchadnezzar returned again. So he still didn't really believe. Oh, he believed all right, but he fought against it. There was a battle constantly raging inside him. And then, exactly one year later, that fateful day came. I would have never believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. I don't know. Send him a gift basket. Of course, your majesty. Right away. Next order of business. The land dispute between General Rimson and Governor Sabri is heating up. Ugh. You know what? Send them gift baskets too. Never underestimate the power of a good gift basket. That's what I always say. Very well. Also... Ambassador Nebu is complaining about your encroachment onto Median land. Send him a gift basket! The southern provinces are rioting again. More gift baskets! And your wife's birthday. Gift basket! Of course. Last item. The Stone Masons Guild would like an extra week to finish the Eastern Wall. Shall I send them a gift basket? No! Why would you? Tell them to be done on time or suffer the consequences. Very wise, my king. Their excuses are a little murky anyway. What? Why would I want turkey? Oh, I didn't say turkey. Yes, you did. No, I said murky. I heard you say turkey. But I didn't. Yes, you did. Well, I think I would know what I said. Are you calling me a liar? No. Are you sure? Because it sounds like you are. I would never do such a thing. Well, either I'm telling the truth or I'm a liar. Which is it? You're telling the truth, my king. So you did say turkey! I knew it! Why would you lie to me? You can't fool me! I'm the my king! My apology, sire. Look around! This is Babylon! This is the greatest kingdom on the planet! And I built it! Without a doubt, my king. There is no greater king and never will be. Look at this! Is this not the great palace I built as the seat of my government? It certainly is, my lord. It was built by the might of my own power for one reason and one reason only. For the honor and glory of my own majesty. I am the I... I am the... Great... Come again? Nebuchadnezzar, this kingdom is no longer yours. For seven years you will live as a wild beast, for God alone rules human kingdoms. <laughs> in the world just happened? I don't know. He just went mad. Like an animal. An animal? It, it can't be. All right, listen. No one is to know about this. Not until we figure out what's happening. Understood? I have to find Daniel and... And, and what am I supposed to tell his wife? Maybe you should send her a gift basket. <laughs> we found no trace of him for three weeks. We searched the entire city, but he wasn't there. Then came reports from farmers and shepherds, sightings of a wild man in the wilderness. 
We tried to keep it secret, but rumors spread throughout the realm. The king had gone mad. Why didn't you bring him back? At least keep him behind closed doors. We tried. We even sent hunters out to trap him, but it was no use. He was far too elusive. If it weren't for the occasional sighting, we wouldn't have even known he was alive. Unbelievable. How could he disappear for months and no one tried to take his throne? Oh, some tried. But Daniel wouldn't allow it. He insisted the king's mind would return. We wanted to believe him, but I'm sure no one did. It's been four years, Daniel! We need a king! We have a king. Just give it more time. Our enemies are already creeping in on our borders. We don't have more time! Yes, we do. Because God himself is saving this Ugh. kingdom for Nebuchadnezzar. We've both grown old, but you have yet to grow up. It's time to stop playing with your imaginary friend. That's a strange thing to say, since between the two of us, you're the one who's actually heard his voice. I don't know where that voice came yes, from. Yes, you do. And someday, you too will have to admit the truth. I pray for that every don't day. Don't you dare pray for I me. I do. And I will. I hate to admit it, but if not for Daniel, I believe the kingdom would have fallen apart. So did it happen? Did the king return? Seven years to the day. Incomprehensible! How did Daniel know? After all I had seen, all the tricks he'd pulled, this one seemed the most baffling of all. He knew it before it happened. How? It had to have been his God. No, I, I couldn't believe that. Instead, I exhausted my resources trying to find other instances when fortune tellers had done the same thing. I found nothing. Was I, too, going crazy? Perhaps I was. Focus, Iltani. You must continue. Did Nebuchadnezzar return to his throne? It was as if he had never left. Almost. Your Majesty, your throne awaits you. That is no longer my throne. Oh, but it is, my king. The Lord God has protected it for you, as promised. Thank you, Daniel. I can't thank you enough. No need. Everyone did their part. We all- No! Thank you for introducing me to God. If not for your faithfulness, I wouldn't know the peace and love I do now. There are no words. You were always a child of God. You just needed a little encouragement to understand it. <laughs> a little encouragement? Is that what we're calling the last seven years? <laughs> <laughs> your Majesty, I say again, your throne awaits. At last, the king was a believer, and I was alone with my doubts. I, too, was going mad, and I'm certain I would have. But our world was about to be turned upside down. Soon, nothing would be the same ever again. It took most of my life for me to find All the things that I had known Had no eternal importance of any kind Because the kingdom I built was not my own it took most of my life for me to learn That nothing is as it seems I wasn't greater than anyone else I was not the king of kings And all that has been and all that will be Is the will of God alone his love reached down from heaven to me Such mercy and grace He has shown A love like I have never known His love has brought me 
Hope you enjoyed it. See you again next week. Bye.